Okay, let's take a look at our heart sounds. Let's talk a little bit about heart sounds. First of all, we have our S1 and S2. Now, I've put them up here to show you the correlation between the EKG and the heart sound that we're hearing. A lot of times when I'm listening to a patient's heart and I hear S1, S2, I'm thinking about that correlating with contraction of the heart. So in other words, I hear S1 and I think atrial contraction. S2 and I think ventricular contraction. But that's not true. That's not really how it's happening. What's happening is the atria contract, then the AV valves close, and we get S1. Ventricles contract, and then the aortic and pulmonic valve close, and we get S2. Think about it like this. If someone were to get up and walk out the door, you hear the door close, and you look up to see who it was. They're already gone. Right? The noise, the sound came after the event. And the same thing is true with our heart sounds. They come after the event. So S1 is the AV valves closing, but it actually correlates with the, e the QRS complex on our EKG. Atria contract, that's the P wave, right? But then you hear the sound when the valves close, and now we got the QRS complex going. Okay, so if you're looking at it in terms of your EKG, it's not going to seem like it's correlating either. Because remember, the sound comes after the event. Okay, so we have S1, S2. That's our normal sounds. And we can have an S3, which comes after S2. That makes sense, doesn't it? I think the thing that gets us confused, though, is that S4. Because most of us are looking for S4 to come after S3. S4 comes before S1. Who named that? Shouldn't it be S0? I mean, who came up with that one, right? So that gets us confused too because we're listening and we're trying to figure out where S4 is over here, but it's really right before S1. Okay, so let's take a listen to, we're going to listen to these and take a little bit more depth on each one of these and what it means. Okay, S1, S2, and then we got an S3 here. Now, did you learn about these terms like Kentucky and Tennessee? Did you learn those in school? Okay, I learned those in school. Well, I should say I was introduced to those in school. I don't think I ever really learned them. And so I'm at a patient's bedside, and I'm listening to the, the heart sounds, and I'm trying to figure out if this is a Kentucky or a Tennessee, and it sounds like Kentucky, or is it Kentucky? I don't know what it means anyway, so i got to call the doctor up and say, hey, the patient's got a Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> so what works better for me is to use these terms, sloshing in, and for an S for a stiff wall. We'll get to that one in a minute. But instead of using Kentucky here, let's use sloshing in, because not only does it fit better, but it also tells me what's going on. An S3, the presence of a new S3, indicates that your patient has too much fluid on board and the patient's developing heart failure. So that's what an S3 indicates. And it sounds like sloshing in. So the pattern for an S3 is lub dub da, lub dub da, lub dub, that's what it's going to sound like, lub dub da, sloshing in, sloshing in, sloshing in. That's the pattern. Okay, let's listen to it here and see if you can pick this up and how you can catch that pattern to be watching for it in your patients. Can you hear how it's a softer sound that occurs after S2? Softer, lower pitch sound, but right after S2. And it's got that pattern of lub dub da, sloshing in, sloshing in. See if you can hear that sloshing in when you listen to it again. Sloshing in. Okay? That's an S3. And the presence of a new S3 indicates the fluid's backing up, we have heart failure. S4 is Tennessee. And this sounds like to love dub, to love dub, to love dub. A stiff wall, a stiff wall, a stiff wall. That's what the pattern's going to sound like. Now see if you can hear it here. So you 
kind of have to almost anticipate it, don't you? Because the sound is soft and lower pitched than S1, so you have to kind of anticipate it coming before S1, and it's going to sound like a stiff wall, a stiff wall, a stiff wall, a stiff wall. Now, an S4 happens right before S1. What's going on right before S1? Atrial contraction. The atria are contracting, and then the AV valves close S1. So right before S1, we get atrial contraction. The atria are contracting, and they're pushing blood into a non-compliant ventricle. That causes the valves to flutter because the ventricle is non-compliant. The patient's having myocardial ischemia. The patient's having a myocardial infarction. The ventricle is non-compliant. And it causes the valve to flutter and make that sound. So an S4 indicates myocardial infarction, a new S4. A new S3 indicates heart failure. Okay, so again, it's nice to pick up the clicks and the murmurs and all that other nice little stuff that you may be able to hear with your patient. But the important thing is to be able to identify the new S3 or the new S4 because that tells you about a change in your patient's condition right now.